software, data classification methodologies. Uh, before I go to the PPT, let me take you through the harmonization center. Do you want to see the harmonization center first? No. Uh, let's do something. Let's learn data classifications, patterns, and harmonized dimensions. And then what we will do is we will uh, we will go back to harmonization center and see like what what is harmonized dimension uh, trying to show in a holistic view uh, which we are which we which we want to see okay uh, we will do it at last then that will be better so uh, so what is data classification and why do you need data classification uh, as a as a part of your process um, Data classification is basically um, sorting and categorizing your data into various types, forms, or any other distinct class. Um, data classification enables classification of data according to the data set requirements for various business and personal objectives. For example, classifying campaigns. So I'm sure uh, you guys, this is very self-explanatory and you guys have seen what is data classification in your day-to-day uh, -day work as well, whereby uh, you get a set of data. What you do is you go ahead and uh, uh, you receive uh, a source of truth. Uh, when I say source of truth, it's nothing but um, nothing but uh, the, the the various um, uh, classification sheets or the taxonomy sheets or um, what else. Uh, you receive you, you receive for various fiscal years, for various months, years. You receive the classification sheet. That should hold good. So what is classification? Classification is nothing but uh, but separating or bucketing your data uh, so that so that it makes sense to us. So uh, so if today tomorrow I have a data which has, which is in my campaign name or media by name um, and I see it um, like you know delimiters. And, so that's how uh, that's how data classification works by bucketing your data into the various uh, various buckets which are which are very essential for us and which we want to uh, see as part of the process. So uh, data classification uh, helps uh, helps in separating your data uh, and also categorizing your data. So when I say separating your data, your media by your campaign name can be can be there. Uh, with delimiters, delimiters uh, like underscores or pipes or whatever hyphen, um, and then that that doesn't make sense to us. So what we do is we go ahead and look for this SOT source of truth, whereby we know that you know what the second position after delimiter is cap country, third position is country code, fourth position is device type, so on and so forth. So the classifying these this data and bucketing them is called data classification for, so that all these de, all these values after delimiters and stuff that makes sense to us that makes that makes not only uh, not only sense but also that that helps us with um, like the various 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 uh, harmonized dimensions that we receive or harmonized dimensions or calculated dimensions that we receive so that we can go ahead and uh, and use our uh, use our dimensions with respect to the measurements and they do makes they do help us make more sense right so uh, having said that uh, classifying campaigns by advertisers who are running them is is pretty much uh, pretty much something that we have seen. We have advertiser column in our search data. We have advertiser column in our uh, display data as well, DFA. So, what do we see? We see that the campaigns have many names. Um, can someone tell me how a search campaign? Uh, what is the hierarchy of a campaign from account till till creative? Mm, campaign under that uh, ad group keywords keywords come right. separately and uh, ads correct, correct. Perfect. 
So yeah, so um, as you mentioned, we have account, we have the various campaigns, ad groups, and then we have the various keywords and ads, right? So so this entire hierarchy is essential uh, while you while you create your campaigns or while you segregate your campaigns. And uh, just to take a step back, why do we uh, why do we bifurcate uh, things into separate campaigns and then? And separate ad groups because uh, if you have a like if you consider an e-commerce business uh, you will find that there are there are multiple uh, categories that come in right so you have shoes you have uh, clothing you have electronics you have uh, whatnot uh, so you have decoratives you have gifting items so when when these everything uh, come into datorama i the, when when all these things a client brings in and uh, and you being an agency you want to uh, want to categorize it so first thing is you want to separate out the all the lobs or line of businesses and uh, then create campaigns accordingly so why do we need to segregate campaigns because we can keep everything under one campaign right but we do want to track the campaign performances. We want to track how the campaign performs. And that's why we, 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 we classify the entire data. Then why do we do it in various ad groups? Because under each category, we have various subcategories, right? So, uh, so if, it is a, if it is a footwear, if it is my category, then I have the various, uh, various ad groups which, uh, which, which deal with, say, um, I don't know, like, you know, with flip flops, with, 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 with party wear shoes, with ethnic shoes and all those things, right? So all these are the separate ad groups that remains beneath them and they have the separate creatives even, right? So these are the separate things that come under the separate buckets and now coming a step forward again. So then we, when you have segregated campaigns, uh, and you want to roll it up to your advertiser, there comes uh, your data classifications in place. So campaigns can be of many names, but if I want to roll it up to the advertiser level, you will see that uh, advertiser will be like, you know, there can be, there can be 200 campaigns, but your advertiser is the same, right? Or advertiser can be maximum of two and three, uh, two or three advertisers that you have so 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 what do you like this is a campaign advertiser uh, relationship that we are trying to classify but uh, but you will see the various types of classification that you need to do in your life and uh, roll it up to a separate entity altogether the other day we saw with uh, i guess with parent child we saw that uh, that you have no, not with parent child, I guess. It was with calculated dimensions or no calculated dimensions, I believe, whereby you have the various channels, uh, various sources of data, Google AdWords and Yahoo, Bing, Twitter, etc. And what you did is you rolled it up to like if it is a Yahoo, if it is a Bing, if it is a if it is a Google Ads, then roll it up as Google search and then uh, if it is a Twitter, Facebook, etc., roll it up to social. So we saw these, right? Uh, we saw these kind of uh, rolling ups happening uh, throughout, and uh, and 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 we saw how we are categorizing our data, and that data classification will also uh, help you do that. Uh, and all these are harmonization techniques, uh, data class, uh, calculated dimensions, measurements parent child and you will see that there are overlapping features in each of these uh, harmonization tools uh, you might think that hey why do we have these many harmonizations uh, if there are overlapping features but then overlapping features doesn't mean that there is that that they could have omitted one feature because you won't find um, you will find different scenarios in the same case where you need to use the two different types of harmonization maybe so uh, in case even you feel that there are overlapping features between between two or three harmonizations that are available with datorama uh, 
like hold back to your seat because you are going to face situations whereby uh, all these uh, individuals individual uh, you know sources individual individual harmonization techniques come as a separate as a silo as a separate case altogether and they come to help you so 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 keep in mind whichever case comes in try to analyze what type of harmonization am i going to use use and uh, and act accordingly maybe somewhere you need a parent child maybe somewhere you need a calculated dimension maybe somewhere you need a pattern somewhere you need a classification to be done uh, so on and so forth but uh, crux of the story remains the same the purpose is to harmonize our data completely and correctly and accurately and uh, take it forward from there right so so that's how our data classif uh, data harmonizational uh, techniques are uh, you know classified in datorama Why, like when i say that what i mean is um this is uh, this is this is how the structurally uh, this is the content of uh, datorama's uh, harmonization so if i start from uh, the uh, the left uh, we will have calculated dimensions i should have kept calculated measurements in there as well because that is a major harmonization and uh, we have learned logical conditions where we we have to use logical conditions to harmonize and then the transformation rules transformation rules will take it up it's very small topic so let me cover the grave topics first and then like you know tomorrow once we are in uh, tomorrow we will all do all these small small topics and we will see how it works um coming to classification sheets uh, lookup is there of course uh, but parent child uh, data fusion these days data fusion is uh, a bit redundant having patterns and classification at place so so let's not go in there and let's not but i'll take up data fusion maybe that is another small topic it's it's nothing but like you know uh, merging your data and, and we'll take it but the grave ones are parent child data classification patterns and then finally the emergent these are um, these are very important topics uh, along with calculated dimensions and measurements um, and logical conditions so these are some of the very important topics uh, that that all, like you know all these are present in your present in the system to provide you with uh, correct and accurate data but you need to know how to use where to use why to use uh, these in separate cases okay so uh, that's how structurally it looks like and before uh, we go off to uh, patterns we will start with patterns but let's see a slide on data classification basically uh, the, the 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 option data classification not the theoretically data classification we now know that what is theoretically data classification is but uh, but as an option of harmonization data classification is present uh, as a tab in datorama what we do is uh, data classification allows us to classify our data without using a single line of code correct now if it is uh, and 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 all these things that we will learn is with respect to dimensions okay nothing to do with measurements so in the earlier slide we didn't keep calculated measurement because all the factors that you see over there are pertaining to the dimensions and not measurements um calculated measurement why i said should be there because it is also an important tool but that that's for measurements baki rest of all these things are for dimensions right so the option data classification that we have in datorama allows us to classify our data using a without using a single line of code this is the most important part previously we saw right uh, while rolling up our data of our data we used uh, if function first we uh, we saw extract extract function we saw like um the count function, uh, distinct count function, and then we saw the if functions. So when we were trying to do a roll up in that case, what we used 
used was uh, if this is this then do this if this is this then do this and then uh, finally an else statement to support everything but so so, so someone uh, by the way when i'm here let me tell that um the the, the code that we use in datorama is java the format that you see so always align to the uh, java syntax whenever you're writing your formulas so uh, data classification allows you to classify your data without using a single line of code okay empowering you to easily accomplish tasks that would have previously been done through classification tools like calculated dimensions or vlookup okay so for example if you need to classify your data by subject area uh, new sports etc just um, upload a classification file and you're set to go. a client provides with a separate classification file where each row is assigned to a classification i guess you guys are used to it to receive the classification sheets from clients whereby he has bucketed so data classification basically helps us to do this without using any lines of code 